All right, here we go. Third and final day at the show. You have to excuse the uh, hoarseness of my voice. The uh, the Alliance event last night uh, was fairly epic, and it kind of did a bit of a number on me here. But it's okay. We'll persevere. We'll get through. So what I'm going to do today, first couple days, I spent most of my time running around on the main show floor there looking at uh, the larger exhibits, all the new pumps and whatnot. Um, but what I find with these shows, every year when I come here, all the uh, the hidden little jewels, hidden little gems, are usually in these smaller exhibitor booths around the back, hidden in the corner, stuff like that. It's usually the guys with a newer product um, just getting into the game. And uh, yeah, it's definitely, every, every year when I come down here and I find something that uh, that is really of some good use and helps our business and helps make concrete pumping easier and more effective for me, it's usually along these back walls here. So if you ever come down, if you ever get the chance, um, don't do yourself the disservice of not checking every nook and cranny of the show floor here. So I'm going to do a little lap around. There were a few things I saw yesterday I did a quick run through uh, that we're going to check out. But uh, yeah, that will be the, uh, the premise of today's video. So check back in a bit here. All right, here we are. First stop, concrete pump supply. And look at these new washout bags, a yard and a half washout bag, which is like the perfect size for putting underneath the hopper of the pump. And it's got lifting straps. I don't know what everybody else is using, but right now we use these vinyl spill pools. They're about $500 Canadian. And when concrete gets in them and you go to shovel them out, the shovel inevitably just ends up tearing the vinyl and there's no way to repair them. So these things apparently are about a hundred bucks and they've got these, uh, cardboard sides to keep them rigid and they fold up flat and end up being a four by four so i would think they'd be really easy to store on the pump so i'm hoping to grab a couple of these and give them a try but uh, i really like the size it's like perfect for putting onto the back end of the pump and if the uh mixer truck happens to have a boo-boo the pump can just piece out and they can deal with it on site because they've got lifting straps to move the thing out of the way so have you folded one of these up i have not folded one up yet it actually is. I don't know if you're allowed to fold it up, Dan. You might get tackled. <laughs> Alright, so there it is folded up. What is that like four by four? Not even? Four by four by two? Two by two and a half. Two by three. Okay, pop it open. Time. Let's see how long it takes you. One superhuman by himself. Maybe we'll help him a little bit. No, we'll see. We'll, we'll do the one guy test. Just like that. That's pretty darn impressive, actually. Okay, fold it up, go. Clock's running. I think you gotta put that over. Oh no, no, you don't even. Don't mind me. There you go, about 27 seconds. That's actually really handy. What do you think? I like the possibilities. Yeah, no, it's uh I think I think it's a winner. And it could double up as a kid's swimming pool in the summertime too. Multi-purpose. So look at this, I found one. I found another good one in the back corner here. The hose rat for cleaning your hoses out. It's got several rubber ribs like a go devil. And then it's got like a uh, stiff bristle abrasive sort of a brush here. And what's the concept is you, you feed the, the cable through the hose yep. and then you pull the rat through. through. Yep. Hook it on, pull it through and it's clean without any water. So if you ever get a site where they got nowhere to get rid of slurry water, Exactly. Problem solved. Yep, can't make a mess. And then you don't have to use air to blow your hoses out, which is obviously an inherent risk with that as well sometimes, if not done properly. So, And you guys will have these in a 5-inch version? Yep. So we could suck them back through a boom pump to clean out the yeah, boom pipe? It's used more for pulling. Okay. If you want to use air pressure, they do make ones that are super heavy-duty rubber. Yeah. That you can blow back. This is more just for Okay. Cleaning. Do you think to suck it back through a boom, it would have to be heavier? I wonder. Yeah, usually you'd use a Nerf ball or a Go Devil. Yes, like, yeah. Um, but this is more for manually, like talking to some this guys out for California. Okay. Yeah. 
talking to some guys who do high rises in California. They have to break apart four inch and five inch. Yeah. And they don't have any water, so they okay. They wanted both. Because the only thing I've noticed with the Go Devil because they're quite stiff. Yeah, they are. Some of the newer booms, especially with tight radius elbows, they have a tough time yep. sucking back all the way. Yep. I'm wondering if something like this, but if it were maybe slightly more rigid for a boom pump, would be yep. like a, a kind of an um, something that would still work and get the pipes clean, right. but you wouldn't have those issues sucking it back. So. Right. Possibly. So the hose rat. So when can we uh, when can we buy this? When's it available? Uh, it's available now in four inch, and those other ones will be coming soon. Okay. Would you make uh, three inch? Yeah, I've had a lot of questions on three inch. So we'll be getting. Yeah, because our hoses is like three inch, three and a half inch. Yeah, and line pump guys a lot in our area. It's two two inch, two and a half, and three inch is like is yeah those are the ones. Yeah. So this is super, super cool. I might try and get my hands on one of these and do a little demo video, but I, I really like the concept. So Yeah, that's the beauty of uh, working the whole show floor. That's when you see stuff. I've been here two days, I didn't notice it. And uh, this is actually one of the neatest things I've seen so far. New and innovative. Not even. No, it's four inches. Once you get a 20-foot hose, every single jack, your hose will get dirty and will need to be cleaned out. Cleaning hoses takes a lot of time, energy, and water. What a mess. But what other choice do you have? Introducing the hose wrap. Cleaning your hoses can now be quick, simple, and stress-free. Simply insert the hose wrap, pull it through, that buildup is instantly removed, and you're ready for your next job. Now, cleaning your hoses is a breeze. The hose right as a product. So here's the other application we were thinking of. When you're up on the deck with a big boom, and you've got four or five hoses out, and you're breaking them off as you pour, and you don't have anybody down at the pump, you can't get down to rinse your hoses out in the summertime or whatever it is, you could throw this baby through, pull it through, and clean them out right there up on the deck and then uh, just leave them until the crane is available to pull them down. Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention you're not relying on our laborer to uh, to rinse your hoses out properly, which uh, we all know how that goes. So anyhow, this is really cool. I'm excited about this one. I think we found it after all these years, 23 years later, the perfect boom pump operator glove. Waterproof, heavy enough you can use the, uh, the palm area for scrubbing your hopper clean. Because we all like to keep our hoppers spotless, right? Right? Yet enough de dexterity, I think you can still run the boom controls with these. These are like perfect. They're completely waterproof. Right now I've got the big yellow rubber gloves that are way too thick to operate the, the pump while wearing. And then I got my thinner gloves I use while running the boom, but they're not waterproof. They get soaked through and when they're wet they tear really easily. I think these are like these will be really good. I'll uh we'll zoom in here on exactly the part number. I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna order some of these and I'll uh, I'll do a review. But I feel good about this. This is through. What booth is, is this? Yeah, what, white cat. VIP. Is it white cat? Oh, okay. Protective industrial products. Protective industrial products. There we go. <laughs> That's pretty quick and easy, right? Yeah. You'd almost just have a bungee cord to secure it, or, or for storing yeah, I think it. So there's there's more of a. All right, found another one. More washout bags. Look at this one. This is. What do they say? One one cubic yard. Yeah, one yard. Seventy five hundred pounds lifting capacity. It's nice and heavy too. Four thousand on the five hundred. Four thousand pounds. Four thousand. Sorry, four thousand pounds. Four thousand. Which is yeah. What a yard of concrete weighs. That makes one, sense. One yeah. yeah, these are nice and, and really heavy. And the price is really good too. I think they're saying like one hundred and thirty dollars. And then for like line pumping stuff, they've got these smaller ones. They're sixty five bucks. Once again, so much better than the old style. They just have the little, uh, the little opening at the top, and you got to try and seal it against the bottom of the hopper door when you're washing out. It's a pain in the butt. But these look really slick. They fold up easy, easy to store. So I like it. I think the one really handy thing about this one is for something like washing out hoses or even washing out a little line pump, because of the straps that are on it, you could actually drag it over to the other side of the curb and dump it wherever. Uh, 
is uh, environmentally safe and compliant, of course. But uh, yeah, I think it'd be a little bit easier than right now we wash out into these pans and we try and lift them up and carry them over and they inevitably fold in half and crap spills everywhere. So this could be a nice little, uh, little line pump washout apparatus for sure. All right, so here we are. We found the Aircom booth there. I did a video a while back with their uh, new Trident X uh, handheld remote for the line pump. And they've got here, what's this one got the jackhammer? Yes, jackhammer. So this is their new boom pump remote. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of features, which could be a, a separate video entirely. So someday I will do that. It's just way too much to go through right now. Um, but some of the key features, this actually is wireless charging. Pulls right off, 28 hour battery life, so you don't actually even need to have a second battery. And the beauty of this charger, it will also charge your iPhone wirelessly. Imagine that. But what they've also done is, if you're a guy that runs small booms or you use your boom pump to plug into high rise stuff, you have the option of with a Trident X handheld, they call it, um, there's a term that they use for that, they call it a belly pack, I think, I believe. Handheld, okay, belly pack handheld. Um, this will link up, you can have this as a secondary remote, so if you're high rise pumping or using your boom pump as a line pump, you're not dragging hose around all day carrying this thing, you've got your conventional little line pump remote here. And one thing that uh, they thought of that I'm very surprised because only pump operators you think would know this or think of this, the one feature it retains from the operation of the boom pump truck is it's got provisions for energizing the outriggers. So when you pull up to a place in boom, generally you hook up your pipeline, play around with your outriggers a little bit to get the back end level where you want it to be at. You don't need to use this belly pack to do that. You can do everything you need to do just from this little handheld here. So the little pump like our little 24 meter where you don't even need to pull the boom out of the cradle to get the mixers on. Absolutely perfect. So very promising stuff. I have another feature to show you. Oh, here we go. There's, there, but wait, there's more. You can fit an Apple Air Tag or Samsung tag in there in the back and it yeah. stays in there. So that way if you lose it, you won't lose it because you'll know where it is. Look at that. And you just hopefully you find it before it gets run over by an 18 wheeler on the highway. But often, honestly, quite often they get left on the job site. So yeah, that's a really cool feature too. We've never lost a remote before. Have you ever, ever, I promise. Yeah, right. ever. I don't believe you. <laughs> I've never lost one, but I've heard of them being lost before. So yeah. anyhow, they thought of that you too. Been so long so this one, lost because uh, this charger, we especially offer to, to charge yeah. this one because we won't only the want the low space. It's very expensive. Yes. So we have a volume. Yeah, beep. If the operator forgot to put this oh. one on, then we worry you, you forgot. So when you drive away, if the remote's not yeah. on there, it's got an alarm. Go back and find the, uh, Brilliant. It flashes and it tells you, and then if you turn off, you just leave. See? Even I couldn't lose it. <laughs> Probably, maybe not. So, yeah, there's all kinds of neat features. It'll have to be a future video sometime. The guys came out and did a demo at our yard about a month ago. And there's a whole bunch of options for customizing the button layout and whatnot and the functions to your uh, specific preferences. So there's definitely a lot of really, really good potential here with this. When are these hitting the market, do you think? So probably this summer, they'll be full production. Okay. Um, right now, we're still just trying to perfect it. We don't okay. want to send anything out that isn't perfect. Yeah, absolutely. I like but that. We're still doing a few demos and tests. So we've done a few, a few different companies and definitely we want to get more content videos before we do a full launch. But this is right now the official, it's coming. It'll be here. Place your orders. Excellent. Well, if this guy can get his hands on one, in-depth video coming soon. I promise. Over and out. <laughs> All right, here we go. Final stop of the day. My favorite booth. Are you surprised? I've had this stuff in all of my videos or a lot of my videos. And my two favorite products, ProStack curbing blocks, slot lock, pyramid lock. On our big pumps, we use these ones. And the version we use on our pumps, the blocks are actually twice as long. Stack them too wide, you get a nice 24 by 24 base. Smaller pumps, we use these ones. 18 by 18 base which is totally sufficient for 40 meter and smaller that's kind of the setup we go with bigger than a 40 meter we use these guys right here um, one thing i'd highly recommend for the uh the slot lock version is get the handle option it does make them way easier to get on and off of the truck um, highly 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 recommend that i don't think it's that much more dough to get it done either so definitely make sure you do that but uh, yeah, we have these on our rigs, use them all the time, like literally almost daily. So one of my favorite products, no BS, 
in the 20 years I've been pumping, one of the best things and most utilized things that we've ever purchased before. So, and I will say, we started purchasing this Dyka stuff back in 2008 and slowly outfitted our fleet. We transitioned from wooden timbers over to the Dyka pads. Uh, it honestly took till about the year 2020 before we had this stuff on everything. So uh, it is an investment, but it's definitely helped us operate more safely, more efficiently, more professionally, imagine that. So they got some literature here with a couple of pictures of the setups. I think a couple of these might even be my setups. I recognize that one. Is there a couple other ones? Oh, look at this. I remember that one. Anyhow, we use this stuff literally almost every day in our area. Super, super handy. So, all right, anything you want to say? Kerry Coburg, Kevin Coburg, the Dyka guys. Everybody is always suspicious. They think that I'm like a Dyka dealer or something like that. The only thing I have ever gotten, I swear, I. As God is my witness, I got two hats. There's one new one right here, and a meal at Cheesecake Factory, which was delicious. I, I only preach the product because it's good, and we use it, and we truly believe in it. I will never promote BS stuff on the channel, like I've said many times. So all of these products, pretty much virtually everything here, we use in our fleet. These are one of our favorites too, the round fiber max pads. Yeah, did you get the multi pad set up? The 1848 too. Which one is that? Let's have oh. Right here. 1848s? Yes, so those are the go-to. Those are the ones we keep on our 40 meter and smaller booms. 18 wide, 48 tall, one inch thick. That's kind of like become a concrete pumping staple, I think, right? Pretty much. So yeah, those are, uh, you can't go wrong with those ones on the smaller pumps. Even some of our bigger pumps, we use them too. Um, on like our 47 meter, I've done a couple videos. We built a rack for, uh, this is a 42 inch round? This is 42, yeah. So we've got a little bigger pad, a 48 inch round that we keep on our 47 meter on a custom pad rack. Uh, these are handy, up to about a 48 inch size. You can get them on and off the truck. You get into the- 100 the, pounds right here. 100 pounds? Yep. So a fit young pump operator, no problemo. <laughs> An older guy like like me, you gotta use technique. <laughs> so yeah, it's all about leverage, right? So, but anyhow, we also have the 60 inch version, which we keep at our yard and we'll deliver those to site for big pours and whatnot for the big, big booms. But uh, yeah, all this stuff I can uh, say I've firsthand experience with most all of it. We've even got, uh, got these guys here on most of our pads or on our trucks now as our wooden pads rotted away over the years. We replaced them with the good stuff, slowly but surely. We, I think we first met here in 2000, 2008. Your dad was running yeah. a booth over in yeah. the in the North Hall. Absolutely. And I think I'd seen the, the products on um, a concrete pump. Yeah, Con yeah, concrete pumping. Yeah, Todd Bullis is yeah. say there. Concrete pumping. Tom, there's a, there's a guy from uh, Berkeley Concrete Pumping. Yes. They, oh, they, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They featured the pads and a whole bunch of his setups. So that was our first Dica experience. Mom and Dad, Dick and Carolyn. Family owned business. Family Good people, right? Yeah. Thank you very Support much. the family business. Absolutely. So yeah, anyhow, that's, uh, thanks for tuning in and watching. Hey, and real quick, just to, to, to speak to what Scott's talking about, the success Scott's had with our products is he came to us and he presented the, the, the problems he was having, right? So when we work with you guys, let us know your equipment, let us know the situations with your face, and there's not always a, while there are some great products that will work for many solutions, sometimes it comes down to your specific needs, what's gonna work best for your team, what's gonna work best for your equipment. So reach out, we are consultants. We're here to help you guys ultimately come up with a plan that's gonna be best for you guys. And Scott's been a great guy, we love Scott. We love his channel. He watches it more than I do. Like but, it, uh, subscribe it, yeah. add a comment. Share it, the for sure. Share it, absolutely. Oh yeah, and yeah. just to, uh, to convey my pump nerd status. Here's the one thing I remember. I think one of your, your engineers had helped me out with this question. I've always got really weird, nerdy, tacky questions. Yeah. This FiberMax pad at one inch thick, and I, I've never forgotten this, is 2.4 times more rigid than a safety tech pad at two inches. Yeah. There you go. So that's yeah. anyhow why we use these on the bigger pumps or in the bigger pad sizes because they don't flex as much for our application. Yeah. And then we usually use a safety tech pad as a top pad just because they're uh, a, little, a little bit lighter on the top pad. It's not quite as critical. It's sort of the, the base pad which takes the brunt of the load. So there you go. Yeah, the, thing, the things I remember, I couldn't tell you my wife's birthday, but I know the rigidity figure is on a fiberbacks pad. <laughs> she doesn't watch the channel. It's all good, man. We're good. There. We're good.
Life last night. She's fantastic. She's yeah. fantastic. Okay, maybe she'll watch this one. You outkicked yeah. your coverage. Is what they say in the U.S. <laughs> oh, <laughs> terrible. You. you see, you see this chiseled jawline. I don't know. That's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, over and out. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, here we are. Conform's booth. We're gonna get the load on the skinny from my biggest best buddy at Conform's. Right? I think yeah. I got a hat. Did I get a hat? No, I know I got a, a pullover. Yes, but not for your brother because he didn't come here. Yeah, yeah, my brother's in the no fun zone. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of where he lives, but that's a whole separate video. So what do, what do we got? This Michael Setner from Conforms. That's extremely that's knowledgeable guy. Will help you with all of your placing boom needs, right? Right, Dan? That's right. Yeah. He's a fountain of knowledge. Yeah, he's Dan's go-to for placing boom stuff. What do we got, Mike? Scott said, what do you got new that we can talk to everybody and show them that's different and unique? This is going to be a pipe that we're testing. We're not going to talk about it exactly, uh, all the particulars, but instead of it being a twin wall pipe with metal on metal, we're going to have a different lining inside here. It's going to create a pipe that's lighter, hopefully durable, uh, that way maybe that the OEMs can take this pipe, put it on a 60 meter boom, maybe shorten the truck weight, you know, the smaller truck, get a bigger boom out of it by reducing boom weight. We're gonna start testing this soon uh, to see how it does. We're not sure if it's gonna work out as well. We have this type of pipe in a mining application and it's working really well for them. That's giving us the incentive to try to do something different in the pipe industry that's not seen anything like this ever. So this is gonna be tested, we'll see how it goes. If it works out well, you'll start seeing it out in the field. It's gonna have a metal shell with a different type of lining uh, maybe even lay down line. So Scott doesn't have to pick up those heavy pipe the, up to the top of the high rise. He can carry a lighter pipe, you know, with this lining in. The Scott's so, getting older. So this is important stuff. So this is gonna be something that's being tested. We're not really, you know, we just brought it to kind of show a little bit. We're not talking about it much. So the biggest advantage is gonna be weight savings then, ultimately. Right. Yeah, we're looking at weight savings. So again, you know, th these guys are, that's why we went to 4.4 pipe, 4.6 pipe. Now they're getting away from it because the wear characteristics are horrible. They don't like, the, the guys don't like it. The pipe's more expensive. It doesn't get the yardage. Maybe this will. And again, that'll allow these guys to, you know, put a 40 meter Pootsmeister on a 32 meter chassis. That was the point of, you know, the 40 meter yeah. Pootsmeister. So heck, if we can get a 60 meter pump and put it on a 50 meter chassis so that they can get pumps in areas that are cold, maybe up into Alberta or other areas where they're worried about bridge weights or in the frost, maybe we can get you guys bigger pumps by helping reduce the boom weight so that you guys can get the truck underneath it to get the reach you guys want. Excellent. So this is probably one of the biggest innovations in a long time as far as pipeline has gone. Yeah. It's kind of been status quo for a while, is fair to say? Yes. We've had in terms some of technology. Yeah, we've yeah. had some neat things. We had a single wall pipe that tested almost as well as twin wall pipe for hardness and it looked like it was really gonna to be an awesome thing. But out in the field, if the chemistry when we made it wasn't perfect the whole way, it wasn't didn't work very well. One pipe would wear out super fast, one pipe didn't. We thought that was going to be amazing. It tested amazing, looked good in the lab. Give it to the guys to use. Now this looks amazing. Looks like it's going to do what we want it to do. We're going to give it to some guys and let them pump some concrete through it and see how it goes. We'll see how it, how it does. If it does great, you know, we'll start expanding where we test it. Give it to other people in other markets and say, hey, try this and check it out for us. If it does great, we'll keep you know moving it and it'll make it to market again we've not seen anything like this in the concrete pumping industry we're going to try it see how it goes maybe it's good maybe it's bad maybe no one will ever see this on their truck ever well, you know, great, we'll though, at least somebody is actually trying rather than yeah. just going and making the you know like i said status quo right, right. so it's nice to see yeah. the innovations at least so yeah it's it, it's a, a very interesting concept for sure yeah. so i'm quite the eager to see how it'll pan out so yeah looking forward to see what happens excellent yeah. and while we're here I actually made a video about this place see out of the corner of my eye and i bought a whole bunch more of these forged clamps 150 those are the 150 bar clamps at least so that's actually a pretty cool innovation especially considering the pricing point was like very similar i believe to the previous generation non-forged clamps right, that's true. right we made a, our couple hundred thousand clamps and it's time to change the tooling it's time to make a better product for the, you know a similar money higher pressure rating make it more durable harder to break the forged steel 
Uh, I haven't seen any come back for breaking them yet. I'm not, it's not a challenge to any of you, uh, <laughs> but uh, they're tougher and more durable. I think so. this guy could break them. I'm, I'm too, I'm too weak. I couldn't do it, but, but this is the guy right there. We'll see what yeah. we can do. I don't want to use the six inch gun. You <laughs> might have to use the big guns on Scott. <laughs> But I guess those are actually quite important, having the higher pressure rating, because now every every shot creep pump seemingly makes 1,500 bar or PSI of pressure, yeah. 2,000 PSI of it's, pressure. I think we did a huge thing for the industry in, in increasing the strength of all the forge couplings, because the small trailer pump guys that have these trailer, that tremendous pressure ratings, the clamps weren't making it. Yeah. And they were living in the safety factor that the clamps got a two to one safety factor. Now at 150 bar, these things now are a one to one, you know, for what they're rated for. So that's great. Now they are stronger than that, two times as strong as that. So we know that they've got a safer, better product. So with those ones being forged, the handle is gonna be forged as well, correct? Right, a lot of guys said that they were breaking the handles on our on the, the cast. Well, on the older yeah, ones, break right here. The, on the older ones, the pivot points would wear out and you'd have those rebuild kits, but with this being a forged handle, a forged body, I would think it would be much more resistant to that kind of wear. Right, this isn't gonna be a forged coupling breaking challenge, but <laughs> we do sell all the pieces, so again, you're buying a better clamp, it's a stronger clamp. If we have to change the handle, you guys gotta buy a handle, you can buy this handle from me. You need a new pin, buy a new pin. You need to buy, you know, the pieces in between here, the threaded end, if you want an adjustable coupling, we can sell you all those things. We, you know, these aren't just made or whatever, these are made to our tolerances, a better tolerance, a higher tolerance than what people are selling from in Asia and other places that we won't talk we about. We literally museum. just put one of these on our um, TK60HB uh, high pressure line pump that does a lot of shock creep work. And I found even just what you're speaking about tolerances, the clamp that it replaced, uh, which was a newer clamp, comparing this to that, it's a lot more uh, precise engagement. There's a lot less slop on the elbow on the back end, so you don't have that wear every time the pump strokes. The elbow's not kicking around, beating up on things that it shouldn't. So, good job getting that open. We really struggled a little bit, I didn't but want to have yeah. To use a six-inch gun, <laughs> and I had to go to Dan. Dan's got eight to ten. But yeah, I know they're definitely a noticeable improvement over the old ones so yeah, far. Even the two bolt connections, you know, on the other side. Again, forged steel. These were 130 bar. Now they're 220. And if you're doing high pressure work, high rises, these are the clamps to get same color, they're, they're painted, but you can definitely see a difference in the smoothness and the construction. We still have our 300 bar clamps. Um, a lot of guys probably don't need to go no, that heavy, which is probably where, where that's not nice. Not at all. Something this in between. This is amazing. The four inch and the three inch, again, pressure ratings way up there they're safer they're better if they're setting up some stationary line or they're worried about it breaking you know while they're doing stuff these are the clamps to use you know forged steel excellent yeah we use all conform stuff on our high-rise stuff i think it's i believe and i don't want to you know assume but i i think it's the only pipeline that actually has documentation and literature to support it so if you ever did run into an issue or you ever get questioned you can actually provide the uh the uh requested we get, information we can take we we're, we'll get the pressure rating of your pump you can contact us we'll give you a complete sheet that says hey with the pressure of your pump it can go down to this minimum thickness you know and make sure it meets the pressure rating of your pump so as you wear it and you're testing it you know when you can pull it out of service and still be safe and if you get into trouble on the job site or anything else hey look you know i can wear this stuff to one millimeter thick or whatever it is and still be fine and meet the safety requirements of the people there that are asking you those questions or wanting you to measure which is something we do get asked for now for our boom pipe that we run is what is the actual uh, minimum thickness that you can allowable thickness to run uh, we'll get asked that by safety uh, safety superintendents on site and whatnot and if we don't have the answers to that stuff um, yeah it just leads to a whole bunch more paperwork so it's, it is way easier to buy the good stuff up front have the documentation have the paperwork if there's ever is actually an issue with anything these guys have always been top-notch about taking care of it it's not just a new product they'll find out what potentially went wrong with the old one which is the difference yeah. and get back with answers so you know things happen things break you know people are involved did somebody not weld something well enough 
it happens, you know, it happens everywhere. It happens with everything. Somebody had an off day. And, but if we have a problem, we usually just don't tell you to throw it in the garbage. We'll send you two free ones the next time. We'll take care of the yeah. issue. But we want to request the item back and go, why did this fail? What happened? Yeah. What can we do better? Do we have a problem? Should we, what should we look at? We do that all the time and analyze it. So we care about how things work. We want you to have a safer, better job site. We want you to go home and see the wife and kids. You know, when you're done with the day, our job's dangerous enough without having to use some cheap product that you don't get, you know, don't know what you're getting. Yeah, I can say personally, we have tried the cheap stuff before and it was a, uh, a learning experience and sometimes a very expensive one. Full, full disclosure, full honesty. So even, even we tried it. I know it can be tempting. Try and save a few bucks here and there. Something is seemingly 30% cheaper up front. But there's just, honestly, in our business, there's hey, way too much liability to be doing I that. I did it so. too. When I was on a pump and I helped manage fleets and on uh, big projects, you know, it was tempting to save all the money. But uh, and when I did cheat, you know, buy something else, um, it usually came back to haunt me and it cost me more than what if I would have bought conforms to start. And uh, I've been in the industry since 94. So I've done a lot of pumping, done a lot of high rises in Vegas and you know, conform stuff never let me down. And if we ever had any issues, they stood behind me. And uh, now I work for the company and uh, bring my knowledge of all the pumping. And that's why Scott, Dan, uh, and the other guys that, you know, Scott's worked with, we talk about a lot of things, bounce ideas off each other, and uh, make sure that we're moving in a safe, good direction. Excellent. Well, thank you for your time, Mike. There's only one last thing to do here. One last thing. It's a stupid thing in every one of my videos. I'll say like, share, subscribe twice, and then you got to say it the third time. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Okay, no, you got to say it, but you got to do some like enthusiasm, some energy, <laughs> make it entertaining. Like, share, subscribe to Scott's channel. Oh, I like that. Like, I like the little twist there. Share, subscribe. Canadian Concrete Pumpers. Canadian Concrete Pumper. Canadian Concrete Pumper. Like, share, and subscribe to Scott's Over channel. Over and out. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> right on. Thank you, sir. All right. So I think it's only fitting that we finish off where we started this journey three days ago. My little 28 meter. I keep coming back to this. Maybe that's a sign. Anyhow, awesome three days at the show here. Lots of new stuff. Some cool new products. A lot of new innovations on some of the pumps here. So. For years there, it's kind of status quo, not much to change, but this year there is some, some relatively groundbreaking breaking stuff that's uh, come to market. So, exciting year all around. Anyhow, that will be it for the week. If you ever get the chance to come down here, absolutely do it. Um, I think Con Ag Expo is in March here in a month or two, which has quite a bit of concrete pump related uh, exhibits as well. Also worth checking out. But uh, yeah, World of Concrete, I've been fortunate enough to be here most every year since uh, 2005. It's kind of like uh, a nice little winter getaway if, uh, if you got the time. So anyhow, you know it goes, like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe. Over and out, catch you on the next one.